Are you bored of standard EU4 gameplay and looking for additional excitement? Well, let's go and try playing as a 10x mode, a mode that I actually already played some time ago as Sprash and was already tons of fun, I recommend checking it. So this mode is making everything 10x. 10x national ideas bonuses, 10x bonuses from the idea groups, 10x estates bonuses and 10x guarantee for modifiers. To make it even more fun, I'm gonna start as a OPM in Japan called Oda. Oda, as you might know, is having top tier quality modifiers in the ideas and I'm gonna exploit the hell out of it. We are also only missing 200 subscribers to hit 100k so we can do it even right now. Of course, if you guys go and decide to support this channel and get notified about the future videos thanks to that. This is gonna be absolutely broken. Look, as our traditions with 100% morale of armies, 100% infantry combat ability, and we also independent daimyo, which is another 100% morale and another 100% infantry combat ability. So I have 200% infantry combat ability and 7.8 morale. Just my first limit is 3 on 4, so it's not helping much. This is why it could be cool to get the land force limit advisor over here, so this way we are having <laughs> 8 force limit. A little bit better. At the same time, I'm gonna go and get uh, the improved relations one guy, so to be helping with the aggressive expansion, and the guy for the stability cost. So I can right away boost my stability for just 10 power points. Look at my ruler. Maybe he's 3 4 3, but he's giving me monthly autonomy change. So even with zero crown land, my autonomy will be still decreasing. So I'm just gonna go and take 10 admin power points here. Then also 250% cheaper advisors. So I could have first took this and then the advisor. So he cost me 0.1 targets monthly. Oh, I absolutely love that. I could get 34% death cost, but of course, 10 stab hit if I want to declare the war so maybe not yet from bushy you're gonna take the mill points as well as the military advisors then i also take the cheaper generals which is gonna be just five points per general my from the merchant guilds is the diplo points as well as the prestige so i'm getting four prestige monthly and the cheaper advisor. I don't think even have to seize my land. Let's just do it once to get it on four. And we need to choose our rivals. For the rivals, it's gonna be Ishiki because it's far away. It's gonna be Takeda for the same reason. And finally, the first one is gonna be Tsutsui. So I'm not gonna block my expansion early. And at the same time, I will get the show strength on all of this. Look at this mana generation. Oh, I absolutely love that. Let's go for the admin focus on top of that because we'll be conquering a lot. We need to take a couple of loans. It really doesn't matter, and these loans will be spent on the free company. And on top of free company, I'll actually also build 1k of additional troops. We need infantry, you remember, we have infantry combat ability. I can also ally some faraway nations that are bigger, like for example Yamana, and I'm also gonna ally something useless in the south, like for example Shimazu. After reaching a month, I can see that Tsutsui is allied to Toki, so I don't really want to fight them. But at the same time, Takeda and Ishiki do not have any allies. So I'm just gonna start going towards Takeda and I'll declare the war right away so they not ally anyone randomly. And that's gonna be the Humiliate Rival Castle's Belly. Look at that 7.9 <laughs> versus 5, 4.3 morale. Just too bad. Religion is also not giving 100% of morale. Now I'll just send my infantry to the Siege of Kai. And I want to right away go after Ishiki before they ally someone. Hmm, and this is a 4k. You know what, screw it, I will go straight away for the Ishiki. The bonuses are improved relations and horizon size, that's gonna be problematic. And Otomo is having just production efficiency and tax meta, so it won't really matter. Go for another humiliate rival. Because of garrison size, I need at least 10,000 troops to siege down this fort. Ah, <laughs> let me start building additional 2,000 of troops. Now you might think, why is Levik you're not conquering lands? Why are you going for the soul strength at the start? Because it's 300 power points for each soul strength and we need to rush tech 5 for admin and unlock the ideas because I want this. Cooperation costs 100%, province war score costs 100%. With these bonuses, I can expand a little bit quicker than normally. Show strength number one. Maybe it's giving more power points also in this mod? No, I think it's each for, yeah, it's just a hand for each power point, which is still really worth it. I think Otomo regrets joining our war because currently they are in one 
two, three, four words at the same time. This is what I'm talking about. 1446, I can already take tech four, which is additional for innovativeness for us. Show strength number two. Thank you so much. That allows me to take also mill technology with the innovativeness. And I think with at least this two show strength done, we could do maybe one more later, but I will start expanding now. Starting with Hitapatake, which is allied to Tokugawa and Ugo Savara, but only Tokugawa is gonna help him. So that's gonna be easy. And I could siege them actually these two nations at the same time. You know what, with my military bonuses and bridged walls here, I believe that it should not be a problem to simply go and rush it. Right? This fort should just die without any of our losses. I'm not gonna even shift consolidate my troops. Because I believe in our army superiority. The infantry combat ability we have and the morale we have compared to the morale of this fort. That should be extremely easy to siege it down. Thank you so much. I don't think we've lost much. It's just a minimal amount. If you ask me if I care about the loans, I'll tell you that. I have 24 loans taken already. But it's just 0.38 of interest because of the size of this loan. So once I conquer these two nations, first of all, the amount of the loans that I can take will decrease significantly. So I should take a couple of loans before taking these provinces. But more importantly, the size of these loans will increase. So I should be able to take bigger loans to repay the smaller loans. There we go. Let's first of all take like 62 ducats of loans. Okay. Then I'm gonna go and peace out and take... Maybe let's try piecing them out separately. Because this way I can take money from these guys. And then I can also go and take money from these guys. Thank you so much. Now you can see it's saying I'm going bankrupt because I can take 29 loans and I have 37. That's why I took loans earlier and I took money from these boys because I can just go and repay majority of these 5 ducats loans. So you'll see that when I actually play around with it, let's just do this. When I play around with it, I'll be left with maybe 10 loans. Take another couple of loans. Of course, inflation is going brrr, but like no one cares, like really, no one cares. Tick, tick, and tick. We are literally left with 10 loans now out of 29. So it's easy peasy, we can keep conquering. Now let's go and attack Imagawa, but I'm gonna go for the conquest. Hatakamayama will help them, but you can see I planned this because I was staying on the same province as their troops. So I'm gonna simply gonna wipe them, occupy key, stand on their capital, and this way I'm just gonna white piece then why I'll be able to go and take down these boys. You know what, screw it, let's go after Tsutsui as well. I could go for the Humliate rival, but I'm simply gonna go for the Kuan quest. I got enough power points from what I wanted, now it's time to expand. By the way, remember, our improved relations is 213%, so the expansion is dropping 6 points to yearly. I really can't waste any time, so I'm gonna go and attack Ogasavara already, even though Yamana will help them, yes, my ally. But this is gonna be fine, let's just start sitting them down with this 3000 stack. As I'm going crazy with expansion and I don't want a quick collision last, look at this. I guess expansion. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just improve relations with the biggest nations. So Ochi, Hosokawa, I need to care about these few nations from joining my coalition, the rest do not matter. I'm gonna hire another general with two siege, this is gonna be perfect, so to get ready for the war against Yusugi, which is actually having 11,000 of the troops, but absolutely no bonuses the army quality. Let's go and see how it goes against the army with not full morale on our side, but I just want to wipe the army just like that to be able to go on the carpet season right now. Of course, they have some armies left, but that won't be a problem to go and just catch them in Musashi and Kozuke. There you go. Admin deck, unlock the deploy ideas, take the first stool. Now, <laughs> could get take 14 allies, but most importantly, I'm just gonna do this. Outrage, 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 outrage. Maybe I'll also just do for the neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. So be just left with two diplomats from me, the rest is gonna be highly improving relations with everyone in Japan. With my mill points, I will start developing the institution in my capital, just to not hit the points cap. Ah, and also remember, I have improved relation bonus. For example, these boys, they have 58. After the month tick, it's already 65. It's improving plus 7 monthly. If you're so down, that's 100 ducats that we really needed to repay part of our debt. Let me start repaying those loans. Maybe even the 1% loans. I think mainly the 1% loans, because without them, 
I can obviously just go and take them again, but these clones are far bigger than what I had in the past. So this way I can go and start repaying more of the 4% loans that I have that are not 30 ducats, like these ones, but are more like the 14 ducats loans. That, so the ones that I was taking some time ago. Don't worry, guys. I will be repaying all of that loans. That's really not a problem. And I will be, of course, decreasing the inflation. But that will be happening later. We need to expand right now. Yeah, about power points. Let's just improve this guy on level 3, this guy on level 3. So it's 20 to 20 mana generation. I'm gonna go towards their province. Staying here, you see that it's 21, but it's being sieged down by someone else. I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer move. So what if I just go to this someone else, so that eh, I attack them, wipe them right away, Take over the siege, 64% now, and I'm gonna also start sieging them down. I also got a war in with Ochi, which is pretty big, and will take time, but it's gonna be worth it. Take, there goes the institution, which costs me 120 ducats. I cannot sell the items because of the rebels. Okay, I just have to deal with these rebels first. Look, another 250 improved relations. So now, for example, with these boys, I guess expansion is dropping 11.5 monthly. Embrace the institution, take the tech 5 on the mill. Did you know that if Garrison is less than 100 people, even if I'm at minus 21, and then the next siege phase, this fort will go down. So exactly right now. That's how the mechanics in this game work. Plus my army is already ready here. Let me go, maybe not attack Ito because it's I to Uchi, but Shoni. Shoni is allies to So. That's actually gonna be interesting. You know what? Let's actually go after Ito first, because for so I will need more transport ships. I only have 3,000 now, which will not be enough to switch down. With 34 army tradition, I can go here and take this, which is obviously, first of all, no decay of the army tradition, and most importantly, 5 mil points per general. So I can just start trying to get something better, most importantly, something with more than one siege, please. I can just keep doing so until I get actually good general, which is really not that easy with our amount of the army tradition, but we already have a couple of them that have two of the siege, so it's good enough for us. Oh look guys, how many rebels we are having! Oh, oh no! Anyway. anyway, I can just go and take the advisor that's giving me minus 20 national unrest. It means absolutely no rebels, and I have the first guarantee form, which is even 150% maximum power, or the tax meta. And I'm gonna go for the manpower. Unfortunately, not the tax meta this time. This is gonna be crazy. I have 200% promise for score cost here, another 100% here, and co creation cost. So, for example, Hosokawa wouldn't be right now be for one way. I would have to do two wars against them. Mink, to follow an next Mink, that would be 10 wars. What if I take this one beautiful idea? First of all, Hosokawa is just 7% of the war score. Mink is just 88% of the war score. If I wanted to, I could annex Mink in one war. And I'm gonna do that later. This way, I can just go here and fully annex both of the boys, but instead I'm just gonna go and separate Ochi, because there's gonna be plenty of money I'm gonna take out of them. And same, I'm just gonna go and take down these friendly nations here. As I really don't have any issues with the rebels, let me just go and start decreasing the autonomy so I can start working on boosting our economy significantly. I'm already hitting adding points cap, so let's just go and decrease our inflation down to zero. To not hit the mid points cap, I just keep recruiting generals and stacking my recruitments. I have great generals and tons of manpower. Fully annexing Kosakawa is 7% of the war score, and then I 25 is full taking full money and coring all of, nice all of these promises is gonna be simply 130 power points i'm also over my gathering capacity <laughs> oh, oh no, no. Anyway, anyway let me just take 1000 gav capacity from the kanushi so this way we don't have to care about that wait what if i take the land maintenance guy how much i'm gonna pay for <laughs> i have army for free with infinite manpower and a lot of Force limit. Remember, guys, the vampire is infinite thanks to my generals. Let me just go and install the building. 20,000 of infantry just after taking two loans from them because we are getting credit to fight 
with Korea and Ming. Actually, if I want to just improve my economy, why don't we share our institution to Ming? It doesn't matter, we're gonna crash one anyway, and this way, I'm gonna at least boost my economy to 50 ducats. Let's not waste time and declare the war on Ashikaga already to become independent. Go and cross the army here, go start is now here. This allows me to become a kingdom and to boost the stability. I'll take this advisor, boost it. Oh, ah, uh, my oh, what the hell is this? Why do I have 286 on minus 100 of half capacity? <gasps> Independent Daimyo is me giving minus 1.5 thousand of GAF capacity. Okay, this is not a problem. <laughs> I just did not expect that. Let me take the privilege from the merchant guilds and make it work. What the hell? How much did they pay for this stuff a second ago? And look, the cheaper advisors are also... also each one of them is plus 100 points for off. I did not expect that, honestly. You know what? I have a plan. Let's cancel this. Let's cancel this. Boost the stability for, yeah, 100 power points twice. And we take both of these privileges. So keep the cheaper advisors. Look, they also upgraded the monuments on this mod. Prestige for land battles for taxes. I don't need it. So none of these monuments are really useful for us. Let's build a flagship. There's gonna be a beauty over here. Oh, oh this is also upgraded. 50 morale. Engagement with and trade power or flagship cannons. I'm gonna win with any one of these bonuses, but also maintenance is way higher. Why don't we go with fridge morale and flagship cannons? So, so I want to stay as independence daimyo, because I don't want to lose these two bonuses. I'm gonna go and stay this province of Ashikaga. I'm gonna ask for independence and I'm gonna keep them as my vassal. I don't think that's possible to vassal them in the same war while we are keeping the independence. So why don't we just do that? And in the next war, once the truce ends, I'm gonna simply vassalize them. With this amount of the money, I will first of all improve my trade centers to level 2 to actually earn more money in the note. And second of all, I'm gonna repay all of my non 1% loans. So tick, 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 and tick. I just noticed that Ming is hanging 300,000 troops. In Korea has 37,000. Oh, naval doctrine are also updated, so I can either go for the galley combat ability or maybe made naval maintenance to pay nothing for the fleet or ship trade power if I actually want to save a lot of money. Let me go for the galley combat ability. After finishing diplomatic ideas, I'm getting diplomatic technology cost, which means that I can pay only 30 points, 30 points for my deck. Okay, it's time to go and attack. Korea. I'm gonna claim another province here. Declare the war. That's gonna call Ming. They became tributary of Ming, but look, Ming is having issues with Oirats. You know what? Let's declare. And let's see how it goes. YOLO. Like, what can go wrong, right? I guess we'll start with the naval battle because I'm being engaged by Korean and Ming combined fleets. But with my bonus, the galley combat ability, I don't think they have advisor for the naval morale. We need to get naval morale advisor as well, because otherwise you're gonna get completely destroyed here. Well, I have the galley combat ability, so it's actually a close battle, but let's maybe not risk, okay? Oh, I, I actually won. Let me try fighting these 10 ships with the morale of Davis advisor. And I think, yes, that should, that should be a way better battle for us. So in this way, we still didn't really win that. Let me run away. We got one ship from them, step by step, we will be able to land in Korea. I'll just keep attacking these smaller fleets until I actually completely break them. Step by step, we'll get there. They already lost 16 ships in this war. Additionally, my flagship finished in this province, so let me just take this fleet and try connecting with the flagship, because with him, I think the war will be pretty much won on the navy for us. And because of that, I'm just gonna go and start already landing here, because I'm afraid that uh, soon, Mink might finish the war with Oirat, and once that happens, I'll be screwed with the amount of the armies that they're having. I'm just thinking, if I just go and start blockading Mink, they might be even willing to white piece us. Just looking on their war exhaustion, how much happened, <laughs> in the meantime, I can catch some fleets, and three wars go. Let's just start with the most developed areas of Mink, so this, and I'll go straight with the blockades, 
to Beijing. Oh no, they pissed out all rats and it's not even close to white piece them. Let me build another 20,000 troops. Oh, yo, 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 by an accident I'm actually attacking them. But this is fine. Everything is under control. Let's start sending their troops. <laughs> yeah, this is under control. 10 points to morale. 3.5 morale, uh, yeah, 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 I think the result of this battle is pretty expected and it's heavy losses of Mink. So in general, I don't really want to fight Mink in this war, I really want just to white piece them. So we're gonna fully ex annex them, yes, in the next war, the blockades worked. By the way, they've lost 61 ships without Mink, with Mink just over 100 ships lost already. What are the beat marketplaces? Let's take a look at the level 2 trade centers. Yeah, the trade centers are also having higher bonuses than the trade power, so that's a must have. Let me build the buildings on each one of them. Full annexation of Korea is just 15 world score, but at the same time 340 against expansion and 220 over extension, but that's just 260 admin points to core it, so I have enough and I don't have to worry about this. Look at this name placement, and I guess expansion, this is fine. You might be thinking all the rebels, keep in mind our advisor. And even with the advisor, there will be tons of the rebels coming, but the coring of one province takes 6 months, so before any rebels spawn, I'll be already having these provinces scored. Okay, Mink finally has tech 6 and they unlocked 50% discipline and 250% garrison size and 50% for the defense in their ideas. So going through the Mink's forts is gonna be pain in the ass. Unless we take tech 7 and get the artillery. Anyway, we don't declare, I'm gonna declare no CB war, because <laughs> why not? And let's just go and start fighting with Mink. I mainly want to focus on actual battles. Oh, I can by the way take the 7th admin tech. And as the 7th admin tech, let's go for the morale, let's embrace the morale meta. It's gonna be 150%, so right now I'm having 14.8 morale. And this is without the morale advisor here. I'm keeping the discipline advisor because Mink is having 150% discipline. I might regret that, but I want to attack Mink on the mountains. 20,000 versus 40,000. What can go wrong? Well, I would say nothing can go wrong when I have 15% of more. They have a hundred, they have 200 discipline because they hired an advisor. But it's 3.7 morale versus 14.9 morale, so there's no chance that I can win, especially with our 200 infantry combat ability. So I'm just completely destroying them out of the map. Just, just perfect. Yeah, I think they're not even trying to put up a fight here, this is just a stack wipe. You know, and just to show you how many provinces I can take from Mink, the answer is yes, I can take everything. And everything means 89 war score cost, 900 of extension, 1.1 thousand admin points to the core, and 333, I guess, expansion. But also, Almost 300 prestige for us. Oops, uh, by an accident I've attacked 50k of the truth with my 20. But I think I should still win that, so it's fine. Unless they would reinforce that with like millions of troops. Which fortunately they did not do. Like, look how many troops they have around. I would just die in this battle if they did. Let's go and have some fun with the Minx armies. I have just 40k of this one stack, but I think this 40k should be enough to go and have some fun. Honestly, no, no, no. Let's wait a second. There's almost 200... They have pretty much 200,000 troops around here, so 40k would not be enough to win this. How's your attrition, Mr. Mink? Is it fine to stay for 150k in one province? Yeah, you've lost 90k to attrition already. Now let's look, because you can see they are going with a lot of troops and province next time, but they are arriving there on the different dates. So if I come over here on the 10th of February, on the 9th of February, then I will be having opportunity to catch some smaller stacks. And I think that's gonna be my strategy. Go there on the 9th of February and win the battle with just small mini stacks of mink. And mini stack of mink means almost 40k that I'm just gonna wipe out of the map. Let's go and do more of this. And I'm gonna start going south. Such a bad idea, Mr. Mink. Such a bad idea. <laughs> I love this mod. I absolutely love this mod, guys. Just, there's just so many options on like how much you have fun, you can have fun with this mod because of so many different modifiers that you can just stack with each other. 
should try playing this mod at least one time with your favorite nation. Yeah, I think that's it. 5 times 8,000 troops killed and I think that's gonna be a very good summary of this campaign. You might think, Slavic, you're gonna die to rebels because of this overextension. Nothing even close. Let me show you something beautiful. The end of the Ming Empire. That's gonna be mana. I'm not gonna use it yet. <laughs> this name place is just perfect. And let's become an empire because we were kinda second great pattern, but we also kinda got 1.1 thousand from Ming, right? Let me start coring all these provinces. And even though I have all of this unrest, remember, all of these rebels. They cannot load faster than 10% per month. So if I'm gonna call most of this process in 6 months, it means that these rebels won't have enough time to progress. Just to make sure that happens, let me pick this. And I think there are a bunch of provinces here I cannot core because they are in the middle of the country over here. So let me just quickly core everything. <laughs> At the same time, I got all of these tributaries over from Ming. That's even better. Anyway, as the final step of this campaign, I want to go and get Ashikaga down. Maybe I'll lose my independent daimyo government, but at least I will fully fix borders. So nobody in comments will say, Slavik, you destroyed the borders. You cut Ashikaga alive. Now I'm gonna kill them. One more funny thing that I will do with China. I'll just add everything to the trade companies because why not? Let's just make one big chunk of a trade company out of these lands. Now, as you can see, most of the rebels are at 50, 60%. But exactly in this month, I'm gonna finish an extension of majority of the provinces. This way, once this finish coring, sick, I still have a lot of rebels, but not as much as it were. It's mainly around 700. So what I could do to take uh, care of that is first of all, yes, of course, start coring the rest of the provinces. And what would help much more was to take care of the war exhaustion, but I cannot really take care of the war exhaustion. But anyway, first, I'm gonna finish the Japanese Empire. Because of that, I'm obviously right now a sh freaking shogunate instead of an independent daimyo. But at least the borders are clear. I think rebels are not a problem. They're fighting with free morale. I have 12, right? So I don't have to care about anything. Uh, unless it's tons of the rebels, but I think this is something that is totally manageable. 3, 2, 1, and all of the provinces will be caught right now. So of course at the very end I got a couple of rebels. Very unfortunate. But after that's done... No more problems. Whew, as the last step, I want to embrace the tax meta. 335 total income, almost 2000 development, and of course, Ming taken in one war. Absolutely love this mod. So, guys, if you want to try it by yourself, it's of course linked in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified about the future content. Bye!